Hi friends, Jason with Exploring History Together, and today I have got a video for you that I hope you're going to enjoy. A couple days ago, my friend David called me up and said, hey, how'd you like to go visit a special cemetery, one that's kind of off the beaten path? And so I said, I'd love to do that. And so he came and picked me up and we headed out into uh, a cemetery and old homestead on a piece of private property that has not been inhabited by a living humans since 1879. That is when the last owner died and was buried on the property. Um, we are going to see a little bit of the home that was there, a little bit of their barn, um, the remnants of the mill that was once on the property, and then we were going to end up in the cemetery there as well. This is the Pharaoh Hansbro Cemetery. Now, um, Elijah Hansbro, born in 1774 or 75, depending on which bit of history you read, uh, on his gravestone it says 74, he was born and he died in 1848. His wife died in 1835, his wife Margaret, and she is buried right beside him in the cemetery, as well as several family members. Unfortunately, a number of children are in there as well. It's they just had a bad time with young children passing away early in life back in those days. Um, but <clears throat> we'll get to see the video. David is our narrator this time around. I will be behind the camera. Um, and as it will be obvious that we're running out of daylight because we're starting to push and get things done, talk, talk a little bit quicker. And so it may feel a little bit rushed and it was, but we were, we were trying to be able to see everything before we got completely engulfed in darkness. So I hope you enjoy this, this video of the Far Pharaoh Hansbro property and cemetery, and we'll see you soon. Here we go. Welcome. Today we are visiting the old Elijah Hansbro um, property. He and his wife got married in 1812 and bought this 420 acre property in the same year. And they moved here. I'm not sure if this house was here when they bought it or if they built it. I would suspect with that year they probably built it. Um, we can have a look at it. The chimney here is 13 and a half feet wide. It's a pretty substantial house for the time. And it's built with stone, many different types of stone. You can see there's sandstone, there's some harder stone. There's red type of sandstone. It is chalked with mortar, so they were trying to live in it, trying to keep the wind out. Had at least two cement or two fireplaces down here. It looks like maybe one was for heating, one was for cooking. There was probably one at the top too. The bedrooms were most likely at the top floor, and the living area was at the bottom floor. And it had some type of basement because there's a hole over here, and it's lined with stone, so they must have been storing food in it in the winter months. Yeah. We do have measurements on it, but I forgot what they are offhand. But it's for the time frame, it's pretty substantial. Back then, when you wanted to homestead something, you were required to build a 16 by 20 house, and this is much bigger than a 16 by 20. So they uh, they did have 11 children, at least one wife, maybe two wives. Um, they got married in 1812. He passed away in 1849, prior to the Civil War. Um, some of his family members, some of his sons, did live here. In 1857 or so, there's a record of one of his sons living on this property and operating the Hansbro Mill, which we'll walk down to and see the remnants of. Um, other than that, he had a couple other sons who moved west into Albemarle County, and they um, took up trade there. They actually had a significant house there that's still standing today. Um, he has a sordid history of selling slaves to the railroad during that time during the Civil War. Um, there's a few books about it written where he's mentioned. I think that's about it for the homestead, what we know so far. 
we can walk over to uh, what I believe is a barn foundation. This is a little bit further down from the, the house property or the house. Um, this is what I think is a barn foundation. These are loose stack um, rocks in a distinct um, rectangle shape. And the rocks here are not chalked with anything. Um, so air was able to pass freely through, which means they weren't trying to live in it. So it's most likely for barn storage. It's a shame it's not standing anymore, but it is pretty substantial. It's almost a perfect rectangle. Here we are at the uh, old mill site, as far as we can tell. Uh, there's a really weak creek that runs through here. Back in the day, it might have been a little bit stronger, but um, this stone here is called a bed stone. It is the bottom um, stone for a mill. There would have been a, uh, a running stone on top of this that sat in this iron thing right here. And you can see there's lines carved into the stone. And what happened, there was a wooden hopper and the top stone would spin on this one and the grain would fall in between the stones and it would chop it up and smash it up. And the grain, which is the disintegrated stuff, would spill out into the edges here and fall into a collection hopper. So they were probably milling like, it's probably a grist mill uh, operation. The top stone, or the running stone is either in someone's front yard on display or it got washed down the creek a million years ago. Um, in 1857, this was operational. Um, one of the sons was living on the property, operating the mill. So it was here then, um, but we don't know basically anything about it other than it did exist. And this is the bottom stone. This stone is probably fairly substantial. They're usually about 12 inches thick. And it is granite. I don't know how they got it out here in the 1850s, but there were there were a lot of mills around the area, so somebody was making the stones and carting them here somehow. So, um, but it's pretty impressive to see. So, I wish we could find the top running stone, but it might be somewhere. Here we are in the uh, Hansbro Family Cemetery. It's only a couple hundred yards from the house site um, up on the hill. You can see it's surrounded by a stacked stone wall, which is very impressive. Some of these stones are very large. Um, nearly the entire family is here. Um, there's one daughter who married a guy named Pharaoh, David Pharaoh, and he, they had a few children that passed away when they were young, and at least two of them are buried here. There might be a couple more over there. Um, they just had some really unfortunate luck with children. Um, so they're buried here. That's one of the family members who moved away though, but prior to them moving away. Once the father died in 1849, um, Elijah, he, I think by then, you know, the family just couldn't live here alone. Um, the wife lived much longer than he did. So I don't know if she was able to stay here or not not a whole lot of information that we found so far but I know at least some of the sons moved away and uh, established themselves further west and then you'll notice that all these stones have the same cut which is very unusual because there is a several decade that's say 17 no, he, he was born in 1774 some records say 7075 but 1774 is when he was born uh, for birth, yeah. Um, oh, so she died before him. She died in 1835. He died in 1849. So she died first. So what I think happened is at some point, somebody in the family um, decided to have the stones uh, cut and installed. Um, 
It might have been his wife for everybody else, but I don't, I don't know. It very well could have been. It's very unusual that all the stones would be the same style and same font because certain people or different people would order them for their loved ones. So the wife of someone may prefer a different cut or a different font. But since these are all the same, it's pretty uh, interesting. So there's no way to know. Um, and then there's one grave over there in the corner um, after this family left this area or this property. Um, they sold it to a gentleman over there in the corner. Forgot his name. It starts with a C, though. Um, I believe he bought it in 1874, and I think he died in 1879. So he only lived here for four years, but he's buried over there in the corner underneath those trees. Still need a little bit of clearing to do there. I'm actually not sure who this person is right here in the middle. Hansbro, Pharaoh, okay. Hansbro. Yeah, it's a H, so it's Hansbro. Enoch, he was a son, yeah, infant son, okay. Infant son of Elijah and Margaret Hansbro. So he died in 1814. They bought this property and got married in 1812. So that was one of the first children and unfortunately passed away. Sure. This one's uh, pretty hard to see. It's overgrown, but it's back there. We did do some cleaning here, but it seems like the tree has fallen some more. Definitely needs some more cleaning. It's pretty impressive, though. This is uh, almost in the middle of a 430-acre property. As far as I can tell, there is not a modern-day house on the property. In fact, I know there's not. And so this person who's buried behind us, you know, very well could have been the last guy who lived on the property. But as long as I've known it's been owned by the current um, owner, nothing is going on down here except hunting and stuff like that. So, uh, And it's possible there may have been, you know, other acreage that was divided from this main property and somebody built a house on that in the 40s, 50s, 1940s, 50s, who knows. Um, we'd have to do some research, but this is quite an impressive cemetery. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the tour.